Good afternoon. This is a little later than I would have liked to have done this video, but uh, this day has been a uh, woo. Uh, chalk it up to six to one, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> Hello. Well, in continuing off of the previous video, addressing those who do not rightly divide the word of truth. I'm reading from the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version. Uh, please find yourself a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Follow along with me. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure in following along that I'm not skipping a groove, okay? Check me out. Check me out, okay? In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, <laughs> we read, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And in verse 14, we read, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Now, words to no profit uh, actually means words to no profit come from those who do not study to shew themselves approved unto God, and that are workmen who do not rightly divide the word of truth such as in the previous video, which will be in the description box of this video. Uh, Mark the Mess, a young Hamite man who is just a mess doctrinally. Why is that? Number one, he's lost. Number two, he is not a Hebrew. Number three, and most importantly, he does not rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Mark the Mess is a perfect example of someone who doesn't rightly divide the word of truth and just takes the all of scripture and put it together and comes out with this mess, okay? Scripture, you tongue twisters, is not a mess. But if you do not rightly divide it, you will make a mess of it. And God will be ashamed, beg your pardon, of you, of you. God will be ashamed if you do not rightly divide this, this, the scriptures, okay? Rightly dividing means to be dispensational. This whole book is written for you, but it is not all written to you, okay? For example, the five books of Moses, they were written onto the Jews, the Hebrews, Written for us to learn from. Yes, Romans 15, verses 1 under verse 4. Yes, yes. But specifically written to us? No. Written for us to learn? Yes, yes. That's Romans 15, okay? Romans 15, verse 4 specifically. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the Bible might have hope. Oh, excuse me. Of the scriptures might have hope. Okay? So, the first five books of Moses were not written to us. Who's us? The, we in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, arguably quite, inaccurately quite, refer to the church age. That's problematic. But the time of the Gentiles. Why? Because us Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? So what that means is you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Like I said, the whole of Scripture is written for you, but it's not written to you. There will be a two-part video in the description box that is kind of long, yes, but the... But the command to rightly divide the word of truth is so important. So it's not a, it's not a well, study to show yourself approved on the God if you feel like it. No, it's a commandment. It, we are commanded to study 
unless you're reading a Bible, okay? This is not the Bible, even though it says Holy Bible, yes, yes. Uh, these are the scriptures, okay? There's a difference. Difference, distinction, okay? But like it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, we are to study, to shew ourselves approved unto God, that we be workmen who needeth not, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you do not rightly divide the word of truth, you end up like Mark the Mess, okay? And in that video, even though Mark the Mess is the, is the focal point, he is not the focal point doctrinally, but because of that, we use that to teach unto you the truth, which that young man is, <laughs> he's, he's damning people to hell. Okay, because Mark the Mess, he teaches against once saved, always saved. Doctrinally, in this dispensation, is applicable. Yes, it is. Okay, he teaches against the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, which doctrinally, in this dispensation, is applicable. And there's another, um, oh yes, oh, how could I forget? He also says that you have to keep the law in order to be saved. Doctrinally? In this dispensation, that is not applicable, okay? So in those three areas specifically, Mark the mess, makes a mess of scripture, and then puts everything together, and it becomes a mess because he's not rightly dividing the word of truth. And hence, because he is not saved, he is not a Hebrew, and he is teaching heresy and error, he is leading so many people onto hell, okay? All right? Look. If that young man were to repent and truly get saved, praise the Lord. But he needs to shut up because he's not rightly dividing the word of truth and he's leading people to hell. Okay? Hence, off of that premise, we're going to talk about another a portion of scripture that most people do not rightly divide. And hence, they make a mess of it. And what is that? James chapter 2. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mark the Mess himself even made a reference to uh, James chapter 2 here, okay, about having faith and works. And we are going to go through this because this is a portion of Scripture, and the arguments are pretty, are pretty decent. The one that I have heard the most is, because we're going to see this, when you read James chapter 2, we're going to be reading verses 14 on to verse 26, and we are going to have some expository here. We are going to have... You're looking for something milky, huh? This isn't it. This is not a milk video. This is meat, okay? If you want something milky, go someplace else, okay? This is meat, all right? This is meat. Because this is a portion of scripture that many people do not rightly divide. And they try to apply what is taught here in James chapter 2, verses 14 under verse 26, to apply it on today. And anyone with half a lick of sense, even that, that twisted Mark the Mess, you read this and then you read what Paul uh, says, and it's like, whoa, wait a minute. There's a contradiction here. And, and the way people, the Christians, especially in the church buildings, oh yeah, the way they explain this is, well, if you're, gonna, if you're truly saved, you're going to demonstrate it by your works, right? And if you don't demonstrate it by your works, then that means you're not saved. That's not true all the time. That's not necessarily true. There are those who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures, but yet, because God, one second, let me, let me make the point very clear to you. All right, beg your pardon. I did this for the video about sodomy, so I'm going to do it again for this one, because this is so important. Rightly dividing the word of truth is so important, okay? There are going to be people in heaven who did not choose to do what God said within the scriptures. Because you have to remember, dear friend, okay, I'm illustrating a point to you so you will not forget it. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now look, see, this is a loaded gun. Okay, this is loaded. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ 
is not putting a loaded gun to your head, forcing you to walk according to the scriptures. Okay? We have free will. You have to make the choice, dear friend. Okay? You have to choose. God is not going to force you to do his will. And here's the thing. Satan is not holding a loaded gun to your head, forcing you to do contrary to the scriptures. You have got to remember that. Okay? You have got to remember that. All right? We have liberty. Yes, we do. If you want to go ahead and be a Catholic for a day and worship the fake God of Christ Mass, uh, yeah, you have liberty. But it's not expedient. Okay? It doesn't profit you. Okay? It doesn't profit you. But yet you have the liberty to do so. Okay? It's not a profit to you. Okay? It's not. I personally believe that God despises Christ Mass because look what people have done with it and look at what people who want to argue for it um, has done to the body of Christ. And they blame saved people for it when it's they are the ones who are doing it. But that's a different thing that we will talk about come December. Okay? But the point is, the point is, so you don't forget, God's not holding a gun at your head, dear friend. So there are going to be people in heaven who live their life as a devil. But because God's word is true, and they came to him, and the, the, the argument is, well, how could a saved person do that? Because God's not forcing you to do anything. We have free will, dear friend. Okay? There are going to be saved people in heaven who made a mess of their lives and who did not honor our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the way we serve the Lord reflects him. Okay? The way we serve him reflects him. Okay? And there are going to be people in heaven whom our Lord, because his word is true, and because they came to him on his terms, yes, okay, and were truly saved, but they didn't live according to the scriptures and lived and loved the world and the things of the world and made a mess of their lives and destroyed their testimony, their life, and put shame upon the Lord. Hence, our Lord, whose word is true, will let them in or else he is a liar. But those people are going to be allowed into heaven with everlasting shame and contempt upon them. Because when you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, okay, let's go there very quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, okay? About the guy fornicating um, with his father's wife, his stepmother, okay? Who, and this man was a saved man. Because Paul says, to deliver, uh, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 5, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. What does this mean? Those who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church and living God, new creatures, okay? They can make a mess out of their lives and go after the flesh and live like the world and live like the devil. What this means is that they will be handed over to that so that God, so that God will allow them to be killed, that the Spirit may be saved in this day of the Lord Jesus. Bluntly saying, if you mess around long enough on God, he's going to hand you over to that sin of yours, and it's going to kill you. If God has to kill you in order to keep you from sinning and living like the world that you shouldn't live after anyway, you think God's going to give you rewards in heaven? When you stand before him at the... No, no, no. And see, this is where the easy believism heretic, right in this area, puts their dung-filled paw there and just won't let it go. Because the easy believism heretic will say, hey, don't worry about it. You're going to heaven no matter what. So that produces in people who save themselves by their own belief because they weren't broken... To go on living like the devil. It's like, hey, God's grace covers it all. And that's one of the things that Mark the Mess was talking about. But see, Scripture is plain. You are once saved, always saved. But see, if you decide to live after the flesh, see, if you're truly saved, you're going to be chastened. And if you're going to be chastened and not receive that correction, but go on living like the devil, you're going to be delivered over to the devil. 
and he's going to kill you. He's going to kill you. God's going to allow the devil to kill you by your sin, okay? Because you read the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2, you see that Satan cannot attack those who God, who God, those who are of God without his permission, okay? And Job had glowing testimony from the Lord, okay? But see, the easy believism heretic will come in to that kind of thing and exploit it, but it's not the truth, okay? We are once saved, always saved in this dispensation. During the time of Jacob's trouble, there will be 144,000 Jews, which Mark the Mess is not, okay, who are going to be sealed in that dispensation. Otherwise, it's faith and works. Hence, that is who that is for what the book of James is written to. For the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right, you with me? Now, enough of my talking. Let's get to scripture. Okay? Because this is something that Christians make a mess out of because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. Christians in the church buildings are not taught to rightly divide the word of truth. Why? Because they have a Bible that tells them to do diligent, to be diligent, to work hard, or something like that. It doesn't tell them to study. It doesn't tell them to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? All right? All right? And I, the, the things that I've heard uh, about James chapter 2, it's like, well... If you're saved, you're going to have works to prove it. Well, it, well, yes, but you got to remember again, God's not holding a gun at your head, forcing you to do anything. Neither is Satan holding a gun to your head, forcing you to do anything. You have to make the right choice. There are going to be those in heaven, dear friend, who do not have any works, and we're going to look at this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, who don't have any works, and the Lord is going to let him in, but yet they're going to be shamed for eternity but yet still be in heaven. And there are people out there, uh, several of them, who is like, hey, at least I'm going to be in heaven. But see, you, the Lord's going to be ashamed of you. Yes, you're going to be in heaven, which is far better than hell. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, but doth not the honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, who loved you and died for you, mean anything to you? And the one that I hear... Um, that sounds really plausible is that Paul and James are not going against each other, but they're speaking back to back. You know, Paul speaking on to the Gentiles and James is speaking on to the Jews. The problem with that is it can lead and imply that there is one gospel to the Jew and one gospel to the Gentile. Hence, hyper dispensationalism that say there's one gospel for the Jew and one for the Gentile. Okay. Um, these, there are certain people out there, easy believism heretics, who, are, who claim to be dispensational. They're hyper-dispensationalists. They say they're dispensational, but they say from Genesis to Revelation, you're saved by faith alone in every dispensation. That, that, that's not being dispensational, okay? That's not. They're not dispensational. Okay, but that's the one I've heard that 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 really, you know, and that makes sense, doesn't it? Right. Because Paul obviously speaks things that are totally different than James. And we're going to look at it. But then what I've heard that really um, the, the one that I've heard predominantly is like they're not speaking in contrary to one another. They're speaking back to back. Paul speaking to the Gentile, Paul, and James speaking on to the Jews. So then that means there are two different uh, Gospels. Well, no, it's the same guy. Uh, no, no, things are different here. Why is that? Because the book of James is written for a different dispensation. It's not written for us today. But James chapter 1, the very first verse proves this. Okay? Follow me along, okay? That's almost 20 minutes of me talking. Let's get to Scripture. The very first verse in James chapter 1 reads, James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes that are, or excuse me, it's the 10 tribes that are in, that are in England and uh, the two, <laughs> no, the 12 tribes, oh, the ones that are here in America? No, no, no. The 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. 12 tribes. The 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. 
12 tribes of Israel, okay? The Hebrews, the Jews, okay? Not the 10 that are in England and one of them, is, one of those tribes is located in Blackpool, you're nuts, or here in America, okay? One located in Oregon, no, you're crazy. No, no, the James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. This is written unto who? The Hebrews, the Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? Okay? Now, there are things that cross dispensational lines within the book of James. Yes, there is. But in the whole, in its totality, as is the book of Hebrews. Hebrews and James are written for the Jewish people, the true Hebrews, which Mark the Mess is not, okay, for the time of Jacob's trouble. Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works, as it was under the law, because the law is going to return again during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, it is, okay? So right away, we see that the book of James is not written to us in this dispensation. It's written for us, but not to us. There's a difference, okay? But let's get to it. James chapter 2, verse 14. What? Doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Well, if you're a saved, you're going to have the works to prove it. Well, well, amen, right? But see, the implication is if you don't have any works at all, then that means that if you're truly saved, then, then that means what? That they're not saved? That's the implication. Like I told you, there are going to be people in heaven who the Lord is going to be ashamed of because they had no rewards at the judgment seat of Christ and they lived like the devil. They're still saved, but they're going to be in heaven, eternally shamed. And you're okay with that? You're crazy. You're crazy. But what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Now see, right away, the easy believe is a heretic. We're saved by faith alone. Can faith save him? Easy believe as a heretic. Yes, we're saved by faith alone. Wait a minute. So, okay, hold, 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 hold up. Can faith save him? Well, let's say the scriptures. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, you ought to know where we are going in Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 8 on to verse 10. Okay? For by grace, unmerited favor bestowed upon us, the wicked sinners, the lost. Okay? Those of you who are lost, it is unmerited favor. Okay? bestowed upon the wicked sinner, the lost, and stuff like that, upon us who are saved, okay? That's what is grace. The better blessing the lesser. That's what grace is, okay? For by grace are ye saved through faith. Our faith is the answer to God's grace, okay? For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So see, grace is the better bestowing upon the lesser favor unto those who are wicked sinners, unto those who are lost, the lost. Grace through faith, okay? God's grace is the better blessing the lesser. Okay, so we are saved first by his grace through our faith. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Not by keeping the law, not by pushing a peanut up a hill. No, 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 no. Okay, it is the gift of God. A gift that cost him everything. But requires of us only what? To come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name. Okay? Not of works, the works of the law. Okay? Lest any man should boast. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Yes, yes. God doesn't save us just to sit there idly and to live like the devil. Unfortunately, there are those of the church of the living God who have done that and are doing that as we speak. And at the judgment seat of Christ, they will have no rewards. They will have nothing. All their work will be burnt up. Okay? But, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, to spread the gospel, to live according to the scriptures. Okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should, what? Walk in them. Walk in them. That we should walk in them. Okay? You have the choice. Again, God's not forcing you to adhere to the scriptures. Satan isn't forcing you to, to live against the scriptures. You have to remember that, dear friend. Okay? You have to remember that. Now, now, now what about this? What about this thing here? What about this here about the faith? Can faith save him? And we are saved in this dispensation by grace through faith. Go to Romans chapter 1. Can faith save him? We are saved first by his grace. Unmerited favor bestowed upon the lesser. Upon you who are lost. Upon wicked sinners. See, I'm a saved sinner. You're not saved. You're a lost wicked sinner. Okay? I'm a saved sinner. And God's grace is sufficient for me. Okay? But it's the better blessing the lesser. Okay? Romans chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Of Christ. You got an NIV? Uh, is of Christ in there? It isn't, is it? What gospel? Because in the NIV it reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It's the gospel of Christ, the good news of Christ. Okay? For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, to everyone that believeth. See, uh, one of the attacks that I have gotten personally is that I'm against, you know, that I preach against faith. Uh, no. No. We are saved by his grace through our faith. The problem is, how do you arrive at the true faith? By being broken of your self-righteousness. See, because you go to someone saying, just believe, without them being broken, then it's like, oh, well, okay, it's all good. It's a, There's no hardship. It's all, I, I'm going to God just for the benefit that will accrue to me by just believing. But see, when you are scripturally brought onto true faith, by being broken first of your self-righteousness, okay? That is the faith that saves, that you are first broken and have godly sorrow, contrition, and in fear of the Lord you call upon his name, okay? Oh, faith is a major part of, of salvation, yes! But it's by grace through faith, okay? And someone who comes around telling you just believe, that's contrary to grace because you are saving yourself through your own belief. Okay? That's why easy believism is <laughs> deadly. Okay? Now let's continue. Let's read that again. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Mr. Robinson. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Like myself, like Mark the Mess. Okay? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Faith to faith. What does that mean? During the time of the patriarchs, which we're going to examine again. Okay? Going to be lots of this, uh, things in the description box for you to look at. Okay? During the time of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was similar to this dispensation. But you know what the biggest glaring difference is between this dispensation and that dispensation is? During the dispensation of the patriarchs, yes, faith was a part of it. And this is where people get confused with the book of James, okay? Because, yes, faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness, 
but he still had to act upon that faith. Okay, he still had to do because the faith that was then in those times, and especially also under the law too, in faith in what God was going to do. Okay, and from faith in what God was going to do to faith today, it is finished. Christ said on the cross, it is finished. So going from faith in what God will do to faith in what God has done, salvithically, pertaining to your salvation, okay? Uh, we have to have faith that, yes, God's going to provide if you walk rightly with the scriptures. Yes, we, yes, yes. But as pertaining to salvation, from faith in what God will do onto faith on what God has done. It's finished, okay? So, right away, James chapter four, uh, chapter 2, verse 14. What does the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? For I am not ashamed of the God, uh, Romans chapter 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith in what God was going to do under the Old Testament to faith in what God has done. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. See, the difference between the time of the patriarchs and the time of today is in what God will do. During the dispensation of the law, they had the law. And that was a whole different other avenue in what God will do. See, under the law, you had faith that God would forgive you, do, would honor you by you doing what he prescribed in the law. Before the time of and during the time of Abraham, that was before the law. They still had to act upon that faith, okay? Because God had not died, buried, and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures yet. Had he? You look at Noah. He said unto Noah, build an ark. He's like, okay, he built an ark, okay? All right? Abraham, all right? God told him to go and sacrifice his son Isaac. And what did he say unto Isaac? Uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves just a little bit here, but go to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. We, brethren, we can't speak on this enough. You look at that video about Mark the Mess. That, that guy's a mess. Because he's not rightly dividing the word of truth. He's not saved. He's not a Hebrew. Yes, but he's not rightly dividing the word of truth. This is so important. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself. Himself. A lamb for burnt offering for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. God was going to provide Himself, Himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, uh, yes, God was going to provide Himself a lamb that hadn't happened yet, and that's what the faith. Romans, uh, Romans, uh, Hebrews chapter eleven, and they they were they were going because they was uh, looking for. Uh, country that they hadn't received yet, okay? They were looking forward to what God was going to do. Today, in this dispensation, it is finished, okay? It's very simple. But, okay, let's go, let's now here, this is going to make some people happy. Romans chapter 3. Now see, in Romans chapter 3, the easy believism heretic will negate, skip over Romans chapter 3, uh, verses 10 on to verse 18, which is there specifically to tell you people that you're not good, that you can't save yourself. See, Romans 1 and 2 and Romans chapter 3 on to verse 18 are there to show you lost, wicked sinners that you are not good, that you couldn't keep the law today in this dispensation to be saved, stay saved, because you'll blow it at everything, okay? Okay. That's what Rome, that's the Romans road to salvation, which everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit from Queens says is the Romans road to hell. And uh, he's going to hell himself. But see, the Romans road to salvation, you bring in in Romans 1 and 2, and it shows you, the lost sinner, that you're not good. You can't save yourself. And in the height of it is Romans 10 under verse 18. Okay? And those of you who dispute this, You've never truly led anyone to Christ. 
because you're not saved to begin with, okay? This is, this is how you lead someone to Christ, okay? All right? But picking up at Romans 19, verses 19 on to verse 28. See, the easy believism heretic will uh, stick just within uh, probably verses what? 22 on to verse 26. There is a, there's a little bit more to it, okay? They negate the brokenness. It goes straight for belief, hence making false converts and making people twofold more the child of hell than themselves. But Romans chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 28. Uh, let's refresh our memories. Uh, James 2, 14. What doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? Romans chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 28. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. You're lost. Guess what? You're under the law. Because the law is your schoolmaster, the schoolmaster to bring you unto Christ. The law tells you what sin is. You're under the law. Okay? Yes. That every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. I should have shut up. Because it just told you the law is there to make you guilty. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You can keep that at, if you tried. You could you could keep the law at gunpoint, even if your life depended on it. And as it says in James 2, uh, what is it, verse uh, 20, I believe it is? Or no, not uh, James, what is it? One of them, where it says, if you break one point of the law, you've broken the whole thing. Okay? Okay? But, let's continue. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So it's like, okay, I can't be right by the law, then what is there? Here's your solution, okay? This is, this is the solution to your problem, okay? Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now see verse 23, yeah, we've all sinned, but see verses 10 on to verse 18 deals with you personally. So you can't go and hide yourself under the little umbrella. Well, I'm just like everybody else. We're all sinners. But see, you press these people, it always, every single time, comes out. Well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Okay? Okay? That's why you read verses 10 on to verse 18. We didn't do that today because we're showing you the difference between the dispensations which these books are written for. Okay? Let's continue. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, because the blood of Jesus cleanses away your sin, okay? To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, this dispensation, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And the easy believism heretic stops right there. <laughs> Where is boasting then? See, the easy believism heretic, you push him hard enough, I'm saved because I believed. Not by his grace through faith. No, I'm saved because I just believed. They're boasting in their belief. This is why they don't continue reading. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Hmm. So when you look at James chapter 2, verse 14, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he, he hath faith and have not works? Can faith say? See, 
you can the the Christians will get or will try to finagle. Well, if you're truly safe, you're going to have the works and blah blah blah. And amen, you ought to. Yes, but the, like I said, okay. And the people who are truly saved and decide not to live according to the scripture, God's going to kill them eventually. They're going to be handed over to the destruction of the flesh. Okay? They don't examine themselves. That's why many of them are weak and sickly because they are living contrary to the scriptures. And then at the judgment seat of Christ, all their works will be burnt up. They'll have no rewards, but yet they'll still, still be saved. But yet, with no rewards? Um... God's going to be ashamed of them for eternity. Yes, it's better to be in heaven and have God ashamed of you for eternity than to be in hell. Yes, but there again, what does the honor of our Lord mean to you? And for those of you who dispute all this, apparently not much at all. And therein I doubt you're saved. Okay? But see, the, the Christians will come up with all these Nice, reasonable, subtle arguments. We, you can't get away from can faith save him. You can't get away from that. And what we just looked at in Romans so far in one and three here. It's kind of, that's a contradiction, huh? You, ha <laughs> sorry, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Or else you're going to end up like Mark the Mess. Okay? But we're not done. We're, we're, skipping, uh, we're skipping four because we're going to get to that later. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 2. Okay? And it's by Romans chapter 5 that you're going to realize when you're, the Lord is using you to witness unto someone through the scriptures, through the book of Romans... By the, time, by the time you get to Romans 5, you're going to know whether that person is truly broken or they're going to be obstinate. Okay? You're going to know. Okay? Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, unmerited favor, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Can faith save him? We are saved. The Lord Jesus Christ saves us by his grace through our faith. So can faith save him? Therefore being justified by faith? Hmm. Got a little problem there, don't you? Unless you write divide the word of truth because remember in James chapter 1 verse 1 James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greetings it's not written to us it's written for us there's a difference but it's not written to us it's written to somebody else it's written for the time for the time during the during the time of Jacob's trouble doctrinally this book is not written for us today there are things that cross dispensational lines. Yes, we're going to look at an example of that today. But in the totality, just like the book of Hebrews, these are written, the book of James is written for the Jews, the true Hebrews, which Mark the Messenger is not, written for the true Hebrews, the Jews, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now let's continue. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. We're, we're, we're going to beat a dead horse. Okay? Romans chapter 9, verses 30, on to verse 33. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling block, a stumbling stone, excuse me, and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Can faith save him? And now, of course, Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record 
that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And see, their own righteousness. Their own righteousness. Easy believism. I saved myself by my own belief. Mark the mess. Uh, you got to keep the law in order to stay saved. Your own righteousness. You have something to boast in. Those of us who are truly saved, genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of God, uh, by his grace, through our faith, we have nothing to boast of. But you easy believers and heretics, you're, I'm saved because I just believed. No, son, no, no, you're not saved. No, or you got to keep the law in order to be saved, stay saved. No, son, you're not saved, okay? You stumble at a stumbling, at the stumbling stone. Okay, let's continue. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. And what does James say? Hold on one second. Let me find this. Okay, what does James say? Big pardon, it was in this chapter. James two ten. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But yet if you break one, you break the whole thing. Okay? See, the purpose of the law was to show you of how inadequate you are. Okay? And trying to keep it today... Uh, no, but let's continue. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Saving yourself, anyone? Okay. Or, who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. Saving yourself. See, taking it upon yourself. You're saving yourself by your own belief or saving yourself because you're keeping the law? As if you're calling Christ down from heaven or calling him up from the dead or something? Okay? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Can faith save him? Hmm. Hmm. And again, how do you arrive at true faith? through brokenness, okay? Brokenness. Their videos will be in the description box, okay? To arrive at true saving faith by grace through faith, you got to be broken of your self-righteousness because if you're not broken of your self-righteousness, you're going only to the Lord because you saw you because you were fed, not because you saw the miracle of the loaves, not because you are sorry for what you did to him. He, you go to him not being broken, you're not saved, for one. But he, you're going to him because he's your little genie in a bottle? God forbid! That's blasphemy! Okay? Okay? But see, when you come to him, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name. Okay? That's it. Those are his requirements. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Because when you are broken and contrite and are scared to death of the Lord, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true saving faith, okay? Because you're believing on him, trusting him to do for you what you cannot. But see, if you go to him, you save yourself by your own belief, or you're keeping the law, then you're doing it. You see? For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile, like me and Mark Lemes. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And of course, there are certain bland, uh, 
planned uh, brand of easy believism heretics. <laughs> they never talk about Romans uh, uh, 10, 14. Okay, hotshot. Uh, How then shall they call on him in, who, on him in whom they have not believed? Yeah, it says believe. Yeah, keep reading. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 14 is talking about those who preach. Okay? All right. Nice try. But there again, can faith save him? In this dispensation? You have a little bit of a conundrum there, friend, don't you? And right here. Uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 under verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 under verse 24. Okay? Preaching. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved. You're reading a Bible? It says being saved. It's not finished, is it? Is it? You got to keep up believing, right? Or you got to keep the law, right? That's what the Bible say. The scripture says, are saved. Okay? But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. See, the cross is death. Humiliation. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He was naked on that cross. Bloodied. Beaten. Couldn't even tell it was a man you were looking at. His visage, his face was so marred, okay? All right? The cross, you lose everything. But see, you negate that, losing everything, and come, oh, just believe. Or, hey, keep the law. You'll be saved. And you got to keep it to stay saved. Yeah? But see, the preaching of the cross is to them, you easy believers and heretics, you Judaizers who want to keep the law today, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to you because you're a fool who says in your heart there is no God, right? But the one that you look at in the mirror, okay? Let's continue. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Brother, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Educated beyond, uh, beyond their own intelligence. Okay, you see these people that go to the cemetery schools and these people go trained by Jesuits. They're educated beyond their own intelligence. They are, the truth of God is educated right out of them. Okay. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Can faith save him? Hmm. For the Jews, which Mark the Mess is not, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Okay? But we preach Christ crucified, the death, burial, and resurrection. And yeah, he's no longer on the cross, Catholic. Okay? Onto the Jews a stumbling block, and onto the Greeks foolishness, but on, onto them which are called. Okay? And this isn't Calvinism or that black Hebrew Israelites, okay? Who are called. God said, calling everyone to salvation. But see, not everyone is going to come to him on his terms. Links in the description box, okay? Check those out, okay? Not everyone's going to come to him on his terms. God's salvation at the cross is there for everybody, okay? But see, the called are those who go to the Lord on his terms, by his grace, through our faith, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name. That's the call, not this Calvinistic nonsense or this black Hebrew Israelite heresy. No, okay? Okay, but unto them which are called, saved, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, 
and the wisdom of God. So when you look at here, James 14, 2, 14, What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? Hmm. Huh. Okay. First Timothy chapter 6. First Tim now, good works. Let's, let's talk about these good works, okay? Because when you are saved, yes, the Lord doesn't save you to sit idly and to have no change. But then, then. God's not holding a gun to your head, forcing you to change. Okay? You have to obey. Okay? Yes! Oh, yes! you got to put legs in them prayers, boy! God is not going to forcibly make you adhere your life to the scriptures. He's going to tell you, okay, it's, it's, don't, don't do that. Get away from that. Get away from Okay? Yeah, don't get away from that. I'm going to hurt you. Okay? I'm going to hurt you bad. Okay, I, I've heard you. Okay, you keep that up. You keep that up. I'm going to let you have it. Then you're going to come see me. And I'm going to be ashamed of you. But you got to remember, God's not forcing it at you. you got to remember that, dear friend. Uh, hey, hey, seriously. It would be nice if he did, wouldn't it? Come on, brethren. Wouldn't it be nice if God actually had a gun to our head forcing us to live according to the scriptures, huh? Right? It would be nice. Then we wouldn't have a lot of the problems, would we? But see, we got to make the right choices. Okay? And hence, those at the judgment seat of Christ, whose works are going to be... But we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that. Don't worry about that, okay? But those at the judgment seat of Christ, who have no works, who live their life as the devil, uh, who God... Didn't kill, but chastened and chastened, but gave them over. They were weak and sickly and amounted to nothing. Yeah, they're going to be saved. But, they're going, but God's going to be ashamed of you for eternity, dear friend. You don't want that. Yes, it's better to be ashamed, God, having God ashamed of you in heaven than to be in hell. Yes. But right there, if you have that type of mentality, dear friend, that shows where your heart really is. Hence, I got a question whether or not you're saved. But we got to remember, okay? Now, about these works. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 on to verse 19. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Now, the Christians and heretics will say, see, you're earning yourself. No, we're once saved, always saved. This is talking about rewards. Once you're saved in the kingdom of heaven, uh, in heaven, okay? These are rewards in heaven, heavenly rewards, okay? Your salvation is fixed. You're truly saved. You came to him on his terms. Your, your destination is fixed. You're going to heaven. Whether you like it or not, why you wouldn't like it, I don't know. But see, the good works. And look at that. Look at that. Verse 18. Ready to distribute, okay? Give of yourself. This is how I give, okay? We're broke. This is how we give, okay? Others actually give this. It, giving is a lot more than this, okay? A lot more than money, okay? That's part of it, yes, but that's not the base of it. You first give of yourself, okay? Willing to distribute yourself. Willing to communicate. Oh, how many of you of the Church of the Living God have taken that very pistol and boom, shot yourself in the foot because you kept your mouth shut when you should have had it open and you had that burning like Jeremiah talks about and how David talks about how that you know there's something and you're on fire inside. It's like the Lord saying, hey, speak up. Come on, this is it. But you don't. Or the contrary, you pop, 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 pop when you want to be silent willing to communicate. 
but we are to be led as the oracles of God. Remember that. Remember that. These videos don't get done unless the Lord is behind them. Oh, you don't want to know how many videos have not been uploaded because there was something wrong and then I go back and then the Lord's like, see that? It's like, oh, wow, thank you. And the ones that he lets go that there are errors in, it's for to humble me, to show you that, hey, there ain't no such thing of, as, a pre, uh, as a perfect preacher. Unless they're from Queens, New York, or Maine, or Florida, or California, you know, Mr. MacArthur, yeah. But generally, in the real world, there is no such thing as a perfect preacher, okay? There is no such thing. No matter what the Jesuit Martin Richland wants to tell you, okay? Just so you know. But yes, when the Lord saves you, he saves you onto good works. Because we are ambassadors for Christ. We have the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. You're not to be a lump, okay? Unfortunately, like I've been telling you, at the judgment seat of Christ, there are going to be there those up there who have nothing. But they're still going to get in. Because God's word is true. Okay, now let's go to Titus, Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, it has, God's salvation is there to be had of anybody, but you can't Boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Hence, you're a thief and a robber. You have to go through the door and going through the door. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. I don't care how annoyed you are with it. This is the truth. Broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow because it's your fault, and in fear of the Lord, calling upon his name. And that happens in a swoop, in a, in a, in a moment. It's not step one, step two, step three, are you saved, brother? No, it happens in a one fell's motion, okay? You might not get it because you might not be saved. If you're saved, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You do. Okay? But the grace of uh, uh, Titus chapter 2, 11 on verse 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly no lusts at gunpoint? No, not at gunpoint, dear friend. Not at gunpoint. To sin at gunpoint? No, not at gunpoint, my friend. No one is forcing you. God is not forcing you. Satan is not forcing you. Okay? Let's continue. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The blessed hope. And our hope is nothing less than who? Jesus Christ himself. He is our hope. He is our liberty. He is our charity. Jesus Christ the blessed hope. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. Come up hither. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, to preach the true gospel, to help the downtrodden and the poor and the needy. Yes. Yes. Okay? Did, were you following me along when we read in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10? Created unto good works? Yes! These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Okay? Well, then, and then the question comes up, it's like, okay, Brad, what about some of these easy, well, easy believism, heretics, diehard, you're not saved. There might be some out there who are deceived, who hopefully this will reach. But then you, the question is like, well, okay, uh, how then do you know the difference between someone who is really saved and the devil? Just, chastisement. Chastisement. 
And if someone is truly saved, God is not going to allow them to be in heresy for that long until massive chastisement, becoming weak and sickly, or he drops, de uh, drops them dead. And interesting, people who speak against the true gospel, such as the Jesuit from Queens, New York, poor guy has cancer. Martin Richling has cancer. Jean Boshoff died of cancer. That's not a coincidence. People who preach against the true gospel and promote easy believism or that they are gods, it's a very dangerous thing to preach contrary to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? But Titus chapter 3 now verses 1 under verse 8. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. And that's not to save yourself or to stay saved. Okay? To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, like keeping the law or saving yourself by your own belief, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, through our faith, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, not at gunpoint, Okay? These things are good and profitable unto men. And see, the Christian will go, see, profitable. And see, what doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith, hath faith, and have not works. Profitable, yes, but how do you get around? Can faith save him? How do you get around that? Oh, they get really colorful. But the truth is, it's written for a different dispensation. Okay? That's the truth of the matter. And also now go to Ephesians chapter 4. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but, you know, the truth of Scripture is, brethren, again, illustration so you won't forget. God is not forcing you to walk according to the Scripture. And Satan is not forcing you to walk contrary to the Scripture. You have to make the right Choices. My wife and I were talking about this on the way to where we were going today. Okay? Hence. Hence. But see, if you walk contrary and you're truly saved, your testimony is going to be shot in the toilet. How can anyone trust you? Your word will mean nothing. Okay? You're, you're bringing everything you do if you walk contrary to the scriptures, bring shame Unto our Lord Jesus Christ. The way you serve him reflects him. And if you're truly saved, living as the devil, oh boy, sick and weak, right? You're sick, weak. Don't amount to anything. And if it gets that bad, God's going to kill you. He'll put you on the shelf, all sick, weak, okay? It's not worth it. Even when you got, oh, a lot of them from Canada, it seems. When you got people from Canada, okay, and all over the world, unfortunately, telling you this easy believism thing, don't worry, oh, you shouldn't sin, but don't worry, you're saved nonetheless, okay? If you are truly saved, that is the truth. But what does our Lord's honor mean to you? Again, and see, that's where the work salvationists like Mark the Mess come in. So, but there again, you're not boasting in Christ, you're boasting in yourself. That Mark the Mess, he was boasting in himself, and that Dear in the headlight look that he always has. Come on. Come on. But Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 under verse 24. Okay? 
This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. It denotes what? Choice, not force. See, after the redemption and the purchased possession, when the church of the living God, the body of Christ, is taken out of here, Catholicism is going to come along with a lot fancier, more powerful guns than this and force you. Okay? All right? Just so you know. But, see, verse 17 denotes choice. Choice, free will. Okay? Unlike what Mr. Calvin taught. Okay? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Blind heart. Oh, you can see, but your, your heart is blind because Satan said to Eve, your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And only God knows what is truly good and evil. Hence, knowing good and evil, meaning you can judge for yourself. We have free will. Okay? who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to, war, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be, if so be, ye have heard of him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man choice, okay? Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And of course, Colossians chapter 3, putting on the new man, okay? Colossians chapter 3. Brethren, we, we mustn't shun or be afraid to speak this truth because of how the Jesuit coadjutor, easy believism, devil scumbag heretics are going to twist it. This is truth. That's on them, not on us. Okay? They're the ones who are going to have to stand at the great white throne, not us. So, to them. Okay? So, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things above on the earth you have a choice again do you get the point you're not being forced by god you're not being forced by the devil okay okay you get it let's continue for ye are dead and your life is hid with christ when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory talking about when he comes back at his second coming we're going to appear with him in glory okay Mortify, kill, put down, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And all of that is idolatry because it all stems to you. Okay? For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You hear the truth of the gospel one time and you reject it. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is against you, okay? In the time which ye also, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now, but now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Oh, God within you. Don't, don't say that. Don't think that. Don't do that. But, again, he ain't make, forcing you to do that. Okay? He's not. You're going to pay a price if you disobey. Oh. Oh. A big price that you can't bear. But he's not forcing you. Okay? But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all 
and in all. Choice. Okay, putting on the new man. And of course, the, the simplest, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Okay? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove, because you are an ambassador to Christ, who are you proving it to? To the lost world, okay? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And when you decide to live as a devil, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. 2 Timothy chapter 4, okay? Second Timothy chapter 4. Where are you going, Brad? Come on. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 5, on to verse 18. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full, full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? In this dispensation, yes. By his grace, through faith, Okay? It's not faith alone. It's first by his grace through our faith. Okay? We're not saved by faith alone. It's by grace through faith. This is what we started with. Okay? But can faith save him in this dispensation? Uh-huh. But during the time of Jacob's trouble? No, because the law is going to be there. It's faith and works. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Let's continue. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me, forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia, hath forsaken me, loved who uh, have forsaken me, Demas, having loved this present world. Okay, having loved this present world. Yeah. Only Luke is with me. If you have one who sticketh closer to you, to you than a brother, what a blessing. Ain't that right, Jelly? Yeah. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Antichicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee. And the books, but especially the parchment. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his work. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not, that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And again, remember, brethren, how do you arrive at true saving faith? By just believing? No. Because why? then why get saved? If you're just believing without any brokenness, you're going to the Lord as if he's a genie in a bottle. Oh, you have a little something, but no brokenness? Huh? No contrition? No, no. Most of these easy, all of them that I've met, to tell you the truth, always come around. I'm better than so-and-so, or it's, it's someone else's fault. It's like, oh yeah, it's my fault, but you talk with them, it comes out. It's, it's always, I'm a victim of circumstance. It's always someone else. Okay? You arrive at true saving faith by his grace coming to him on his terms. Okay? Because what happens when you love the world? Okay? 
What happens when you love the world? Oh, really quickly. Really quickly. Reminder, you know, we read about it in uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Uh, okay. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. Verses 15 on to verse 21. Yeah. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And see, those who are infiltrators, if there's no ch chastening there, then you can know that they are not of God. If they're not being chastened for speaking heresy, then doubt they are of God. Okay? Chastening, weak or sickly, or drop down dead. Okay? Because, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time, like Mark the Mess, like so many other people that we have encountered. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Oh, see, verse 19, that's the falling away. And what does James chapter 4, verse 4, just one verse, verse 4 say? Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Well, I'm not a friend of the world. Really? Is there any distinguishing you between the world, Christian? No. Is there? Okay? Okay? And uh, let's see. Let's continue. First Peter chapter 2 verses 1 and verse 10. Okay? What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 10. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Yes, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are his ambassadors, having the word of reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation. How you serve the Lord reflects him. But if you're actually saved and live like the devil, he's going to put you on the shelf. You're going to be sick. You're going to mean nothing. You're going to do nothing. And eventually you're going to die. And you're going to be in heaven, yes. But the Lord's going to be ashamed for you etern for eternity. Because our Lord's honor meant nothing to you. I don't want to live with that. And see, those who want to live with that have chosen the world. Hence, you're an enemy of God. Hence, I doubt you're saved. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. 
Why do you want to live like the lost world that he called you out of? Okay? All right? And of course, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 13. This is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now that is not talking about salvation. That is talking about rewards, blessings, provision, that kind of thing. Because there are many out there who don't examine themselves and their life for Christ means nothing. Their testimony is shot. No one can believe what they say. They, may, they have no fruit. The fruit they have stinks and they're sick. They're weak. They're, they're whatever. They're living in sin. And eventually that sin's going to kill them. Okay? But see, the denying him, if you deny him by living contrary to the scripture, he's going to deny you protection, grace, blessings, that kind of sin, stuff, but not salvation. Okay? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself because we are, his, we are part of his bones and his flesh. He can't deny himself can't deny himself but if we deny him deny him walking contrary to the scripture he's going to deny us not salvation not salvation go to first corinthians chapter three. First corinthians chapter three and like i told you at the beginning of this this is where the easy believism scumbag comes in and makes a mess of everything okay but right here first corinthians chapter three verses 11 on to verse 15 for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We read these scriptures in the previous video, but we're going over them again, okay? Now, if any man build, up on the, build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, gold, silver, precious stones, abide fire. Wood, hay, stubble, like a puff, okay? Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Okay? Gold, silver, precious stones. Okay? If any man's work shall be burned, wood, hay, stubble, don't amount to anything, Okay, vessels uh, for glory and for dishonor, okay? Christ might decide to keep some of you alive to show you a bad, uh, to show what a bad example is. Oh, I have to, I'd hate to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ uh, with that, that he kept me alive to show what a bad example, oh, I'd hate to have that. To be branded for eternity with that stigma, oh. If any man work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Eternally secure. But see, no rewards, no nothing. Because you lived your life. You, you, you gave credence with your mouth. You professed much love. But... You chose to live as the devil. Hence your testimony is shot. How could anyone trust you or believe you? It's, is it any wonder why you have no su success at witnessing? Hmm? And the worst off, which might be a blessing, the Lord might kill you. What doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? Verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful for the body, what doth it profit? What doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Dead faith without works? Today? No. 
No, because we are saved by grace through faith. But dead works being a dead uh, faith, uh, what is that? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone? Dead faith today? No, no. Dead faith during the time of Jacob's trouble, where does faith and works? Yes. Verse 18, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith with thy, without thy works, and I will shew thee the, my faith by my works. See, it's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, those of you out there who say, well, you are the church of the living God, you can't live it. Oh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, you're definitely going to have to live it because the law is going to be reinstituted. Okay? We talked about this before. Okay? The law is going to be reinstituted because that man of sin, the son of perdition, in order to placate the Jews, is going to bring about the law. Okay? And they're going to have animal sacrifices in their third rebuilt temple. Okay? And then that man of sin, midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, is going to come into that temple. I am God. Uh, some of the Jews are going to wake up. Okay? And he's going to change times and laws. Okay? He's not going to be a lawless one. He's going to establish his own laws. Okay? Contrary to the scripture. Okay? But the significance of this is during the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be the mark of the beast that no man might be able to buy or sell save they have the mark of the beast in their right hand or in their in their forehead. Okay? And if anyone takes the mark of the beast, they go straight to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts. So, during that time period, if you don't have the mark of the beast, you ain't going to be able to buy food. But yet, those who are uh, tribulation saints, a uh, good name for them, saints during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, um, if they deny people food and clothing and that kind of stuff during the time of Jacob's trouble, eh, faith and works. I'll give you a good example of this. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Now, significance. Matthew chapter 23, talking about the times before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The spiritual climate. Okay? Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble itself. Okay? Matthew chapter 25. We're reading verses 31 on to verse 46. Okay? And right away, let's have verse 1. In Matthew chapter 25, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Stop right there. Hold up. 25. Then the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. The kingdom of heaven. Okay? Context. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Matthew chapter 25 is talking about the kingdom of heaven. You get it? Huh? No? Okay, let's talk. Verse 31 on to the close of the chapter. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, that's us, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Sitting upon the throne. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? Okay, let's continue. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall sh and he shall sh ah, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Now, this judgment is pertaining to the judgment that to what was done during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, because here in James chapter uh, 2, verses 15 on to verse 18, James is saying, okay, uh, you say, okay, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, because of the mark of the beast during that time period, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful for the body, what doth it profit? Nothing. Why? Because it's reference onto the time of Jacob's trouble. Where food is going to, you think food is getting scarce today. Wait till the time of Jacob's trouble, boy. Especially when that mark of the beast comes in. Oh, boy. Okay? But, 
This judgment that he's talking about the sheep and the goats is in context to what happened during the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's keep reading. Then the king shall then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, James chapter four, uh, chapter two, verses fifteen on verse eighteen, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace and be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful for the body. What doth the profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Ye may, yea, a man may say that thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Verse 37 in Matthew 25. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee and a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, the Hebrews, the Jews, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell, you know, the lake of fire, is prepared for the devil and his angels. You don't have to go there. For I was hungered, for I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when, when saw we thee in hunger, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Not everyone saith, who saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Sermon on the Mount is for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You get it? Do you get it? Do you understand? Oh, that's me being prideful, right, mate? Shut up! Shut up! Do you understand? Do you understand? Okay? Because, you know, James chapter 5, okay? The contrast, those who are having mercy, having works in a time of faith and works. But the contrast, James chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Woe to those Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble that have a stockpile, who don't get the mark of the beast, but yet hoard it to themselves. Oh, you're, in, you're going to be in trouble. Okay? You understand this. Okay? This is for the time of Jacob's trouble, what James is talking about, about the naked. Now, today... We have the Church of the Living God. Should we apply that to today for our instruction in righteousness? Yes. But doctrinally, this is for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Do you understand that? Do you see that? The comparison. Do you see? James is for the time of Jacob's trouble. And James 14 under verse 26 here, or 26 is for the time of Jacob's trouble. It's talking specifically about the faith and works that will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. It does not apply for us doctrinally today. Okay? Now let's continue. Okay? Verse 19. <laughs> thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. 
one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. The satanic trinity, that's of the devil. The trinity, that's going to be on the earth. The, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Okay, so during the time of Jacob's trouble, the satanic, hellish, Catholic, perverted, disgusting. <coughs> hey, your trinity. <coughs> I spit on the trinity. It's of Satan. The trinity is satanic. The Godhead is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. A lot of people like to say it backwards. Scripturally, it's spirit, soul, and body. Okay, but your your little satanic hellish trinity shall be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't you worry. In the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Okay, but thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now, now here, here, here. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Now, now hold on a minute. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, right? Right? And I've dealt with this with atheists before. Now, okay. James 2.21. Was not our father just... Our, was not Abraham our father justified by works? Hold it there. Romans chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Wait a minute. Whoa. 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 Let's keep reading in Romans chapter 4. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the faith of the friend of God. Verse 24, in James chapter 2, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Let's keep reading in Romans chapter 4. Verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? Reference there. Circumcision, those who keep the law. Uncircumcision, those who are Gentiles, okay? Hebrews and Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles, okay? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Yes, Abraham was not circumcised yet, right? When he was given the promise, right? Right? Huh? He was first promised, then he was circumcised. Okay? Okay? How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision but in uncircumcision. Hmm. Hmm. And Abraham's seed, that will be in the description box, okay? He was first given the promise, then he was circumcised, okay? Okay? And he received the sign of circumcision, 
a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which had yet, which he had, being which, uh, okay, I just lost my place, which he had being yet uncircumcised. So what is this talking about? Okay. Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. But see, from faith to faith, okay? During the time of the patriarchs, the, Abraham had to believe on what God will do. Hence, put Isaac on the altar. God shall provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. Noah built an ark. He built a, an ark and God delivered him. He believed in what he had faith in what God was going to do. Do you see that? Okay. Hence, from faith in what God will do, in faith in what God has done. And see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, Christ is going to be coming back. He will be returning. So the faith and works, okay, can't take the mark of the beast, got to keep the law, the commandments of Christ, the faith and commandments, faith and works, okay? You got to keep the law and you can't take the mark of the beast. But your faith during the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to be coming back, okay? That's what this is describing, okay? This is not a contradiction, okay? Paul is talking about the faith that Abraham had, while James is talking about the works that Abraham had. Obviously, verse 24, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Okay? And not by faith only. Hmm. But yet, that's not for today. That will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. Let, let, let's continue in Romans chapter 4, okay? Verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. See, the time of the patriarchs in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, are similar. But the difference is, Christ is, it's finished during the time of the uh, patriarchs, and what God was going to do. Okay? He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. He gave them the law. He told Noah, build an ark. It was in what was going to be done. Today, this dispensation, it is finished. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble. trouble. Yes, the sacrifice has been made. Yes, that's when Hebrews comes in. Yes, and James comes in during the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, Christ will be coming back with us, his body, his bride, okay? He's going to be coming back with us who were redeemed, okay? Hence, you're looking for what's coming during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? So that's why it's faith and works. You see then how that, that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. And... Well, well, let's continue here in Romans chapter 14. We're, we're going to read this whole chapter, okay? Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Because by the law, you know what sin is. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Okay? Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. 
And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old. The promise of Isaac. He had to have faith in what God will do. God provided. And then he said, offer Isaac on the altar. He had to have faith in what God will do. See, going from faith and what he will do in the time of the patriarchs and also during under the law and to what he has done. It is finished. Salvifically, it is finished. Do you get it? Do you understand? Please, do you understand? Okay, let's continue. Okay. And being not weak in faith, 19 in uh, Romans 4, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, and having faith in what God will do, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. See, he's talking about the faith and what God has done. He's making Abraham the example. We are to have that faith and what God has done. It is finished. Where during the time of the patriarchs and under the law, it is, it is in what God will do. Well, today it is in what he has done. The faith that we have today is in the finished work of the cross upon Jesus Christ himself. During the time of the patriarchs, under the law, it was what was going to be done. Do you understand? And see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the law is going to be reestablished. Yes, it is. And Christ is going to be coming back. The second coming. After the time of Jacob's trouble. Is it clicking? Please tell me it's clicking. Please tell me you understand. Please. Ser seriously. Tell me you get it. Okay? Please. Let's continue. Verse 20. Again, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being... It says it right there. And being pulled, fully persuaded that... What he had promised, he was able also to perform. What he would do. Christ said on the cross, it is finished. You come to him on his terms, you are saved, sealed. Go into heaven whether, when you die, whether you like it or not. Once saved, always saved. It is done, finished, we have it in writing. Okay? Our faith is in the finished our Lord Jesus Christ, our hope, our life, our redemption. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Do you get it? Oh. Verse 22. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not, it was, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised Jesus from the dead, who was delivered, past tense, for our offenses, and was raised for our, again, for our justification. It, it, see, it, it's, it's, it's right there. It's right here, dear friend. You have to read. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. See, it's given for you right here in the scriptures. It's given to you right there. What this is talking about. Faith, from faith to faith. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. You can't apply James 14 on verse 26 for today because it's written to someone else during the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, like Mark the Mess, you try to apply it today. Okay, but verse 24, let, let's reread. Verses 21 on to verse 24. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he had offered Isaac, uh, Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Why is he saying that? Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, they have to have faith that yeah, Jesus is going to come back when he says, when he when at the second coming, he's going to come back. Okay, he's going to return after the seven years are completed. 
Okay? He, he says that uh, no flesh will be saved. He'll cut the time short or else no flesh will be saved because that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to go ballistic on the Jews. Okay? He is. Okay? But during the time of Jacob's trouble, see, he's making that reference because they are going to have to have keep the law, not take the mark of the beast, and have faith that Christ is going to come back. Because they've been, uh, up until midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, they haven't believed on their Messiah. And then, once they see the false Messiah, that man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to be indwelt by Satan, coming in, looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus, saying, I am he, the Jews are going to be, no, 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 no. Then they're going to go to the book, okay, then they're going to go to the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews is going to show them. It's like, oh, wow. And then James. Can't take that mark. Faith and works. Okay? Because it's not... You're, I mean, you'll have probably Christians, these easy believe. Oh, just believe. Just believe. Yeah, you know, well, what about the mark of the belief? Don't worry. It's You're saved by faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Okay? And hence, damning people to hell during the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, faith alone works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Anyone telling you it's faith alone from beginning to end? They're a heretic, they're a liar. Ignore them. Because they're damning you to hell. Anyone's telling you that you got to earn salvation or keep the law to be saved today in this dispensation? Avoid them. They're, they're leading you to hell. Okay? Brethren, people, okay? Paul was talking about that faith that we are to have on Christ. It is finished. James is talking about those works that they did through that faith because Christ is going to be coming back. Do you understand? Do you understand? Dear man, dear woman, dear Gentile, dear Jew, it cannot be made any more plain than this. But verse 24, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only? And hence, the Christians from the church buildings, a lot of these heretics, it's like, so see, if you don't have works, you're not saved. That's not what Paul taught. They're going like I, like we've been discussing. I'm not going to beat that dead horse. But Romans chapter 3, okay? We've already read this, okay? Romans chapter 3, verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Contradiction? No. It's written first to someone else. It's for another dispensation. Okay? All right. Uh, Romans 5, 1 again. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, James uh, 2, 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Contradiction? No. It's written to someone else. Oh, if you're like Mark the Mess, and, oh, yeah, yeah, then you got a big contradiction. No! Rightly dividing the word of truth. They're written, it's written to somebody else. It's written, as, it's for another dispensation. Galatians 2. Galatians 2. Okay? Galatians 2. I, I'm sorry if I seem stark raving. <laughs> Brethren, how many of these Christians, how many of these heretics have you encountered who go to James and just make it an absolute mess? Why? They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. And they turn out to be like Mark the Mess or the, the Canadian uh, easy believism scumbags. Okay? Who are dispensational, but it's faith alone from beginning. They're not dispensational. Galatians 2, 16 on verse 21. <laughs> 
knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Hold it there. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And the works of the law is what James is preaching. But if while, but if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ a minister, minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again, return to your vomit, the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. And right here, some of my some of my favorite verses in Scripture. My ultimate favorite. I, I, I'm going to share this with you. This right here. This is where this was the breaking point for me personally. This verse in First Timothy chapter one verse fifteen. This is my favorite verse in all of Scripture. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. That's my favorite verse in all scripture. But right next to it, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. You know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And see, again, God's not forcing you at gunpoint to live according to the scriptures, and Satan is not forcing you to live contrary to the scriptures. You have a choice. But see, if this is in you, Christ is in you, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And you want to live, con you're saved, really saved, and are sick, weak, on the verge of death. Your testimony is shot. Your word is shot. You have no fruit. You know what? You know what you did? I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. And, 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 and Galatians 3, 24. Galatians 3, 24. You know, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Okay. <laughs> and Titus 3, 7. Again? Okay? Titus 3, 7? Okay. Uh, brethren, people. <laughs> Titus 3, 7. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. By grace through our faith. You see then? How that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. And Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Why are they being patient? Because they have to endure to the end to be saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. They have to endure to the end. You and I today, we don't have to endure to the end of anything. Once saved, always saved, okay? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble, which the book of James is written to. Verse 25 in James chapter 2. 
Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith, so faith without works is dead also. But see, in this dispensation, like we've already looked at and proven, there are going to be people in heaven that have made a wreck of their lives, have basically lived as an enemy. The, the Lord might have kept them alive to make them an example, a bad example, yay. But nonetheless, in this dispensation, we are saved by his grace through faith. James, dear friend, is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. There's no contradiction. There's no fancy uh, Jesuitical gymnastics. It's written to someone else. It's for a different dispensation. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Don't fall for lying heretics like Mark the Messenger, who will say, you know, faith and works, you know, you know, see, a man is justified by, not by faith only, but, but by works. It's written to someone else. Beware of people who try to incorporate today doctrinally James chapter 2, verses 14 on to 26. Beware of them. They are not rightly dividing the word of truth, and most likely they are lost and on their way to hell and trying to drag you down there with them. So. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The book of James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, my friend. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not in the fact that there's a contradiction between what Paul and James said, because we saw him. But see, if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, yeah, you're going to have a contradiction. And yeah, you're going to make a mess of the scriptures by trying to blend them together. And they don't blend together because James is written. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad greetings. It's written onto someone else. It's written onto the Hebrew people, the Jews, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Doctrinally, it doesn't apply for us today. What does apply for us doctrinally today? We already looked at it. Uh, verse 4, James 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that, that, not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Okay? But see, you have chosen to be a friend of the world. And all your rewards are going to be burnt up. You'll be saved if you are saved and get into heaven. But the Lord is going to be ashamed of you for eternity. Which again, yes, is better than to be in hell, yes. But it shows that what kind of a man are you? Where the, where the glory, the honor of our Lord means nothing to you. That you are willing to live your life as a Jesuit, as a devil to the fact that you have no testimony, you have no witness, and you're basically a scoundrel. But yet you're saying, that's going to happen. That is. That is. You deny that, you're denying the scripture. And you're a heretic yourself. So. And see, Christianity, Christians, who don't rightly divide the word of truth. Even those Christians that do. <laughs> no. I'm not a Christian. Those are not words to no prophet, dear friend. We have been rebuking people right here today. Who speak words to no prophet. Trying to incorporate James. Work salvation. Today when the book of James is written to someone else.
It's written for us to learn instruction in righteousness, yes. Some doctrine does apply, yes. But in its totality, it's for someone else, not for us. And if you don't want to accept that, that's your problem. Go ahead and give $100 to Mark the Messenger. And then he'll put your, or you want to get really noticed by him, give him $1,000. Then he'll go ahead and put your thing on his uh, YouTube channel. Hence, you'll have your reward, the praise of men. It's going to be it for this video. It's a little shorter than I anticipated it. But, um, this is something that had to be done. <laughs> Remember, God's not holding a gun at your head. Neither is the devil. Okay, take that away. That is going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, email addresses are there to get a hold of me. Leave it in the comments. Someone will answer you. Uh, people who comment on these videos like to quote a lot of scripture. So, that's going to be it. Please keep us in your prayers. We need your prayers. We need the Lord's guidance. We need his provision. The Lord, praise the Lord, has been taking away dross. The Lord has been taking away the dross from us so that the pure remain. Please keep us in your prayers. And we pray for so many of you. We love you. See you in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.